count down and we go. And then one of the performers just whispered into my ears, it's like, and now 40 million people are watching you. <gasps> <laughs> Hi, today we are talking to Justy, whose stage name is Ticker Sparks, and she runs the company Delighters. Uh, Justy, welcome to the show. Yay! Hey! <laughs> we're going to have background noises here. Uh, we are in the middle of 2020 right now, and so we're actually recording this outside because we're not even allowed in each other's houses. My name is Justina, I'm from Hungary originally. I lived in Scotland for 15 years now. And I came here first 17 years ago. Right. But the circus story started before then. Um, it started in the year 2000. So 20 years ago, on a trip to Egypt, I was really in a different place. And I really found something with the fire and the mm. dance that meant something for me. And I said, you know what? That's it. <laughs> I'm going to be really good at this. Yeah, it's very similar to my story with fire. Like, I went traveling and I saw people do it, and I was just like, wow, I'm going to do that. It's yeah, great. it's the element as well as combining it with movement. And then uh, I did discover other people doing it pretty quickly in Hungary in the party scene. And uh, I became and, uh, um, I became part of the group Firebird, we performed together and teach workshops and went to all the festivals. So pretty quickly, I was like, oh, yeah, that's. That's my tribe, that's what yeah. we do, we went juggling, to juggling conventions, so all the other skills came on top of that. And then I came here and decided to continue. To, to stay, and why did you stay in Edinburgh? What, what made you think that Edinburgh was the place, or did it just sort of happen that way? Oh, I was kidnapped by the fairies. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot in Edinburgh. I came, um, I came to perform at um, the Wickerman Festival as part of a European Youth Exchange Programme. Yeah. So we were, you know, young and happy and we were traveling all over the UK and some places we were teaching, Boy Scout camps, and some places we were learning, like Sheffield at the Green Top Circus. Or just traveled a lot to perform and exchange skills. And uh, the Wicker Man was one of those places where right. we offered workshops and the performance to burn the man. Yeah. And uh, that's where I met my now husband. Mm -hmm father of two children <laughs> yeah. and uh, my heart to stay here. Did you do theatre before you got into circus then? Were you always performing? Kind of so things? it was the same it was the, at the same time right. when I picked up my first fire props in Egypt. I actually was really drawn to just travel and stay in the desert and do this and live my life like those Australians did. I really want to know who they are, my inspiration. I have no idea. Wow, Australia is doing fire, it could be anybody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so they were traveling and they were, you know, just earning money, busking and going to the next place. And I was like, wow, this is how you can live your life. You don't have to settle down. You can just be free and do what you love. You don't need a proper job. But at the same time, I was studying for my university entry exams in Hungary for right. master's on theater theory. Yeah. So I thought, well, I will give it a chance. And if I don't get in, then... Yeah. That's that's decided. Yeah, you obviously do quite a lot of circus disciplines. We've worked together in, on a fair few gigs and stuff. Um, what are your favourite kind of circus disciplines to perform? Mm, to perform, well, I I still really love fire. Yeah. Unfortunately, my lungs are not very good mm. with fire after twenty years of inhaling the fumes and yeah. having quite bad asthma. Yeah. So, and at the time, you know, we were like one of those first generation of right. fire performers who just went for it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's really did a you, new wave. So, we had a lot of stuff without knowing. Did you used to happen. breathe fire or something? Well? No, no, not at all. No, not I, learned, I learned with water the technique, yeah. and then I thought, actually, I don't want to put this stuff in my no. body. My main discipline now is hoops. I could never play hoop as a child. Really? As a child, yeah. <laughs> so, when I was at a juggling convention and someone did a beautiful trick and like the escalator, up for the escalator and it's like, wow, it's magic. She's like, yeah, I'll show you. Grab your hoop. It's like, I don't have a hoop. I don't know how to do it. Well, grab a hoop. There is one. She's there. It's like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> She's like, well, I'm just going to tell you, so do it. <laughs> so I tried and I managed for the first time yeah. and I thought, wow, yeah. if I can do something so magical, yeah. 
I'm gonna crack this. I'm gonna do this. Yeah. So and now, yeah. Yeah, now I had, I had the same, the same thing. Skill. Somebody showed me. I thought I could never do that. I can't do that. And someone showed me how to do one thing, and I did it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Mm. Let's do that. It's I just think break that seal. Yeah, that's the real magic of circus for me, and that's why I love teaching. Yes. Because I get to pass on that that alchemy, mm. that transformation, that self belief. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Oh, I can't! I can't! And transform into can. And wow! Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can. If I can achieve this, which I say is impossible, then I can translate it to other areas of my life. Yeah. I really love contact juggling as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, because I can, I can move with it, and it's quite mesmerizing. And uh, I do some aerial, which I don't count myself an aerialist yeah. by any means. Yeah. But I find the challenge incredible. Yeah. Like the physical challenge as well as that mental challenge of I can't. Oh yes, I can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna just face plant into the floor now and let go and oh I didn't. Great. I find that again to add it into shows as an element yeah. is incredible and to break that um, that physical plane of just you're just here mm -hmm. very uh, here horizontally and yeah. to, to go vertical as well. So I really love the um, diversity of uh, aerial equipment and the expression that's... Uh, next question, can you open that for me? Because uh, oh, wait, I'm, just, I'm not... I can just swipe it up. Ah, okay, but yeah, now it's... Oh, okay. oh yeah. Are you Managed taking to... pictures of I your did, legs? <laughs> I think I double, double, double tap something. Hey, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Technical genius over here. Uh, so you have your um, own company, oh, Delighted, uh, which, okay. how long has that been running? It's been since 2008, so 12 years now. 12 years. And do you want to just tell us sort of what the company is about and the sort of things you do? So the company was uh, established at the time because uh, I wanted to explore adding theatre to circus. So it was more like about circus theatre. But then again, to find funding for that is just really tricky as a yeah. starting up young company, well, me. Because by that time I, I did circus for eight years, so I felt that okay, I've yeah. I've played at festivals. I love playing at festivals and I love playing at community events, and it's yeah. really great. But if uh, and we are paid well enough for our skills by those who can afford it, yeah. then we can bring our skills to communities and festivals for a lot less. I'm really grateful for that as well. Yeah. I had a big uh, aversion inside me of like yeah, but this it's not the kind of world that I really want to. I don't want. To I don't want to be someone's live firework. Yes. But on the other hand, it's people. Yeah. Even corporations are made of yeah. people. So when you're there, there's that human connection. Yeah. And there's that spark. And if you inspire one person to do what they love, whatever it is. So the company Delight is, is obviously running since 2007, you said. 2008. 2008. And um, is it still basically a sole trading kind of thing, or have you expanded? So or? I was a sole trader for ten years, and now it's a limited company. Right. So now I'm the director of Great. the letters, mm -hmm. the artistic director. <laughs> 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 and uh, I occasionally work with an admin person. Yeah. And the workload requires it, but it's yeah. And it's, how how big is the pool of performers that you use? I think about um, that the pool itself is about. 20 people. Yeah. I think I don't like to do bigger than 10 to 12 performers because I feel that then I lose the um, oversight of, yeah. of the quality of yeah. what's everyone doing and what's happening, where, when. Yeah. So it's large enough group, 10 people, to, yeah. to fill a space but also kind of tight enough to be able to rehearse and devise. My impression of your work it especially is like the costumes are always really really fabulous and really luxurious and they, they look very <laughs> special like they're the sort of things you won't find you can't buy those sort of costumes in the shop where do do you make all your own costumes i just started to pick up things in charity shops and combine them with other things and yeah cut them alter them yeah and uh, i just build up a huge do pile you... of, of things that i can i Mix. can alter like i have all these hats and then just decorating them different ways. Yeah, one of the trickiest um, costume making thing was making these white organza capes. They were really beautiful. It was like kind of quite otherworldly, mystical things. Like, you know, just this floaty 
with these uh, silhouettes right. underneath. So working with organism and you have to cut it in a yeah. like an angle, it's just like really fraying and trying to like, stick it down. Are you sure? Wait, sorry mate, let's keep going. If you ever create something for a specific event and it's just for that and the client pays for the costume to make to be made for that then we yeah. then we do it for for that stuff. So we don't redo that yeah. because three times it's there. But that I presume that costs extra as well. Right? Yeah, that costs yeah, that and that costs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much preparation goes into a gig in general? Yeah, it depends. So from from inquiry to actually doing the gig, it's not even over then. It takes a lot of time to practice and do choreographies. If it's a choreographed show, then... Do you have a, a, like a regular meeting when you meet with your performers and choreograph stuff, or do you do it as and when? We have um, like duo or trios. We have uh, choreographies that we have, but we just do it for, okay. for the actual gigs. Cool. So it's easy when you're working with the same people and it's just, oh yeah, let's, let's just do that one. Oh, it's a different theme. Oh, a greatest show. Okay, let's just re-choreograph it for that one. But then the timing is different. So it always requires rehearsals. Yeah. We never just, you know, yeah. rock up and just do the routine. Even however well we know it, we, we run it always cool. before. Cool. And then the preparation on the day. It's, um, I like to have a, at least a few hours mm -hmm. at the venue to see where we are, see the site, see if we have to adjust anything. And do you, you visit, tend to visit the venue first as well before you even start? Like It depends. If we need to go for a um, site visit for a risk assessment, for yeah. a site-specific risk assessment, then uh, we do. Yeah. Otherwise, I just see photos of it or mm -hmm. bad description I mean, so, of yeah, sometimes <laughs> what it's going to be yeah. like. Or sometimes you rock up and it's like the um, stage is like twice the size of this bench <laughs> and they wanted the biggest thing you have. You yeah. know? All the surprises on the day. It's just, I just like to be there early to, yeah. to prepare. Yeah, and change things if you need to yeah. be. You mentioned earlier that you have a family, um, two beautiful blonde kids and a, thing, and a husband uh, who is a film director. So I'm not worried at all about him seeing this. <laughs> Running a small business with a family, is that, I mean, something I've always thought about, like doing circus, especially something as, as, as fickle as circus. What's been in your experience of uh, raising a family and, and running a, a circus business? Yeah, it's, it's pretty challenging, most of the time. Especially that both me and my partner Working, well, working from home or working for our own companies. So it's not like, oh, 9 to 5, okay, kids, we are back. So we often don't have weekends or evenings, but we're pretty good as a team at like, passing the kids on and they have a very flexible mm. attitude towards what life can be and what people can do. So yeah, yeah our, our kids are great. Yeah. But it is, it is tricky, especially when... Uh, things get really stressful and there's a lot of work and lots of uh, commitment and expectations on me already and uh, and of course like but look at my drawing and I need to do that and it's just you know it's that it's constant if I was uh, training I would be really sad that I should be with my kids they're little and they want me and I'm yeah. here and it's so selfish yeah. why am I not doing that but when I was doing that I was beating myself up there was a point where I had to decide that, okay I'm just gonna commit fully to whatever I'm doing in that moment yeah and not give myself a hard time for not, what I'm, I'm not doing so yeah. there's only one of me but the kids are yeah they're that's their their life now circus is just kind of you know, normal for them it's like going to the supermarket going to the circus people wearing beautiful crazy outfits it's like oh yeah you know, I come home sometimes after performing at an event for kids and like, oh, wow, my kids didn't see me this way. So I just leave all the sparkles in the wig and the whole thing. I come home with a snow fairy and my lit up costume and they come in and they're like, can we finish watching the film? What's for dinner? You know, it's like they don't even bet an eyelid anymore. It's hard to impress them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one gig. I remember particularly was uh, very soon after Tristan was born. <laughs> you know, do you want to like t say a little bit about that gig and uh, how yeah, that was? Yeah, I think he was uh, six weeks old when we went to Skibo Castle. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. had uh, we had my husband there holding him, and then I had to just 
go off and breastfeed in the staff room. <laughs> like, and that okay. was a that was a really high yeah, profile yeah, gig as well. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people I think you had was twelve people or something like that. Yeah, we had quite a few on, on that one. Sure yeah, I had again. a few of those where we had a, a technician with us who kind of set up things but also stayed in the dressing room with a babysitter come so, technician. Yeah. I mean that's rare. Amazing, you, eh? you don't find many techies well, like that. I circus. Mean, <laughs> most most of the techies I know I wouldn't let my children any <laughs> They'll be smoking fags before you know it. Yeah, I think with uh, with my daughter, with my firstborn, I had a I had a bigger break and I kind of uh, abandoned my circus dream mm -hmm. for a couple of years. It just made me really miserable. And when I found that I was pregnant, I just said, okay, great. <laughs> I will just, I'll just stop now and figure out what I want to do with my life. Yeah. So it gives me a bit of time. And also, I, just, I was just very anxious about, you know, what if I do a bad move and mm -hmm. I lose this baby? I don't want to risk yeah. that. Yeah. And I have to make money, like proper money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially when so, you, once you have two children as well. So I had a coffee yeah. job instead you know, at, the, at that time, like right. when I just got pregnant with my first one. And then after she was born, I think she was a year and a half when uh, the lighter started up. Yeah. And um, yeah. it was, Much yeah, it, it, just, it was just necessary. Or really aching and longing for being on stage and being part of that show. Like, Yes, I used to do that, and I used to be good at that, and that's yeah. what I used yeah. to do, not anymore. And uh, I just realized that, okay, I have to do something about it. So I gave myself one summer to see what happens. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what happened was, this is what happened, yeah. And then when I went on maternity leave the second time with my son, that's when I was like, okay, I'm now a mother of two children, and it's time to take my job seriously. I was really afraid I will I will miss that that stamina that you need to, to put yourself out there. Because I find it, I did find it really difficult to come back onto stage after that like two year break of not performing. You know that yeah. it takes such self esteem to be able to yeah. show your vulnerable yeah. side or yourself as you are on stage. Yeah. And be judged and yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's actually that's one of my passion in the whole, in my work, uh, directing and mentoring others for performances. So I set up this cabaret night called Circulation, yep. which is to showcase uh, Scottish-based performers' new acts, or to inspire the creation of new acts, because there's not much happening in Scotland. There's such amazing circus performers who you get to see at corporate events when people can yeah. afford them. but. I wanted to bring it to areas where people don't get to see yep. shows like that. So we perform at North Edinburgh Arts at the moment, looking to extend to other areas, but it's in uh, North, yeah, North Edinburgh Arts, your house. We had this deal with them, like, okay, what if we just put on a circus show? You give us the theater, we give you some, like the ticket splits, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. And we sold out fabulously, and it was just a beautiful thing that there is a need for this. Yep. So part of the program is to give a theme to performers, to performers, to, for to inspire them. Yeah, really lovely. And but still, it was um, on the basis of okay, the tickets will just be turned back into the event itself. So pay the photographer to take photos and videos. So all the acts would have. Um, the footage and photo material of their new act mm. so they can sell it yeah. in a theatrical mm. environment yeah. but you know with like the blackout curtains yeah. and the nice lights and the professional photos for that sort of shoot and environment you would pay about I don't know 500 pounds yeah. to quick, quick bonus question actually you're from Hungary yes mm -hmm. and it's quite hot in Hungary in the summer yeah. I so maybe you can tell me what is this big shiny mm. thing in the sky oh, it's a fireball I don't know should we panic ah. <laughs> Any notable favorite or least favorite gigs you've ever done you can talk oh. about? Maybe you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I was thinking of was actually just the other day of like, well, the worst ones. It's like, do I have a worst one? I love them all. No, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> there are some ones which is like, oh, I wouldn't go back there. But I find that I learned from them so much. Mm. Like, rather than beating myself up for it not going the way I, I imagined, I just always, there's always something to learn from it. Yeah. You know, of like, te test all your equipment before, or 
you know, rehearse more. Tell the clients clearly what it is you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they want to know, and they sometimes don't ask questions. They're just like, oh yeah, sure. And but they are expecting this, and then you do this. Yeah. Oh, that gig we did together, and the <laughs> and the gale force wind. A oh. fire show that was commissioned oh, yeah. and we had to do it yeah, I mean, because it had to be done at that certain day. There was a lot of money that was being spent on us. Yeah. Well. yeah so was. we went and did it, but there was no point because the wind just blew all the fire out. And so it was the um, <laughs> it was a gig we both did together in Glasgow, and it was for the start of what's called the Star Mall. They have a Christmas shopping period in Glasgow. Mm. And for the opening of that period, they'd hired us and they'd hired a very uh, talented costume designer called Mona Castle, who made a load of costume, custom costumes for the event. And then we'd had rehearsals. We had like a, a week of rehearsals or something and like more. this. And we had like multiple rehearsals. Yeah, and we, we'd um, devised completely new performances for the whole thing. We, you know, so it, it was like a good month plus of work, basically. <laughs> And the one night it happened, the night itself was what the biggest storm of the year. And there were 30, 40 mile an hour winds. It was raining cats and dogs. Like the stages were just full of things. And the only people standing watching were the photographers being paid to watch it and us being paid to do it. And everybody else would walk past very like this hurriedly under the rain and look at us and go, what are you doing? <laughs> and um, we did it and actually I learned a lot from that gig. I learned that mm. sometimes you have to cancel because things, fire toys were being blown, mm. blown across the, the stage and stuff like that. And it probably wasn't the safest gig I've ever done because of that and the slip, you know, the slip sort of it's so slippery, yeah. And, yeah, so yes, that was definitely, definitely noticeable yeah. gig. Oh. But then again, you know, it's a good laugh. Yeah. At this, like there, we were freezing. Yeah. We were like, Weird. when will this end? Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, but then it passed, and we did learn a lot from it. Like now, I know that for every every quote I give, I tell them there is yeah. a certain amount of wind and yeah. rain that you can take, and so do your guests. Yeah. You know? the, the, the beers after that gig were very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed the beers after. That. Yeah, but then best ones. Oh, yeah, loads of them. I wanted to ask you, you went to, um, was it Hong Kong for the New Year? Yeah, the Chinese New Year night parade in Hong How Kong. How was that? It was beautiful. It was with this Irish landscape theatre company called Lux. And they're, oh, they're just absolutely brilliant to, to work with their imagination. You know, they think big and they create big and they dream big and it just manifests. And right. they give a lot of artistic freedom for the performers they work with. Um, they're like, yeah, we just want you to do that. That would be your bit, and it's always site specific, and they just take you to this amazing enchanted place. And yeah, so you will be doing your thing there. And yeah, okay, how long do you want me to do, and what do you want me to? Do? Well, we just, you know, it's a journey through the cosmos, and we will just end up here with these ships, and then you are this like fiery goddess, and then we will just move. And it's like, okay, so you have this, and then they just give you all the trust that yeah. what you do is the best. And that's what they want yeah. there. They're like, okay and countdown and we go and then one of the performers just whispered into my ears it's like and now 40 million people are watching you <gasps> no, it's like, okay no pressure yeah. so you know even the That's... tricks that i was really comfortable with and yeah. they made a really simple but very you know visual routine for it but i'm like oh my god i'm gonna drop what if i drop <laughs> is that is that your biggest uh, audience of your career do you think oh, probably for somebody who is thinking about starting up a a circus company or a sort of performance company like the Lighters now uh, would you have any advice for someone who's trying to get into the industry oh well this present moment <laughs> just don't do it <laughs> yeah well i mean no right, it's, uh, because of the 2020 pandemic, folks 2020 COVID. <laughs> Think about what you really want to do. Why is it you want to do it? And then really cater for that and find out who your who your audience is. If you were to perform, if you want to teach, of course, find out who who are those people who, who need it. To have uh, really good photos of anything you want to sell because it's a very visual thing that we are doing. So at least photos videos even better yeah. so record your acts even if it's you know just a selfie in the, in the dressing room of uh, your costume or doing that put yourself out there of course on social media and whether that's the way to, 
to get across these days and just keep doing and doing it and believing it in you, believing in yourself even when it's not happening. Thank you very much, Justine. Yeah. So it's just the Tinker you. Sparks. Thanks for uh, having me. Tinker Sparks is her stage name. Delighters. It's delighters.co.uk. Yeah. Is the website. Check them out. And uh, if you need a really fabulous, fabulous performance for your mm -hmm. wedding, corporate okay. event, or anything like this, this is the person to call. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> right. Cut. 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 Oh, how much is this parking ticket? Oh, yeah. 30. 30? Oh, it's okay. Okay, I thought it would be worse. It would be 60. First parking ticket, folks. First parking.